Here to explore how AI is changing the meaning of art, please welcome Jason Scott, a software curator in Free Range Archivist from Internet Archive, and Adrian LaFrance, executive editor of The Atlantic. Jason, thank Hello. you for being with us. Hello, Adrian. How you doing? He always has the best blazers, you've probably noticed. Um, so I want to start with a bit, we're going to have, this is going to be fun because we're going to have demonstrations for you all. Um, but first, orient us a bit. When we talk about AI art, what do we even mean? How does it work? Sure. So what we're calling now AI art, and by the way, it's so fast now, they're now calling it synthetic media. So get on your, get on that. But it's the idea of using analysis of deep ranges of images and not just looking at them as like patterns or samples, but actually uh, you know, connecting their captions and their contexts up against pictures of all sorts and then synthesizing new versions from all that. So basically a giant database of images that can be drawn from to call to mind the thing that you sort of prompt it to make. Right, and, it, and, the more, and the more you look at, the better, or at least the more uh, interesting, I guess, it gets. So the one that a lot of people are using right now is a set of five billion uh, texts and text and image, you know, uh, caption collections. And why is it exploding now? I mean, it seems like various forms of machine learning and AI have really accelerated in recent years in particular. Uh, so they let it out of the lab and let regular people play with the toys. Uh, if you go inside a lot of companies, everything from food to medicine to everywhere else, you can go down and go, wow, this is amazing. And they're like, yeah, and you have to sign 10 NDAs and you can't tell anybody this is going on down here. And it's clear that across the AI companies or the companies that are doing this, they're all kind of positioning to figure out like, where are we gonna be? And some are taking the model of, well, let everyone play with it. Now it's part of the world. Well, and so, of course, my mind goes to creative industries, but when you think about the implications for this sort of technology, just sort of give us an overview of how this is going to change the way we interact, not with art, with what, you know, whatever other sure. industries come to mind. So first, I just want to say, okay, so even though I'm a guy in a top hat who looks like he sells Dr. Scott's tonsorial <laughs> operatic fluid, I do want to say, in fact, I'm not going to give you an affiliate link. I'm not going to tell you to go to one company. I'm not going to tell you I'm being brought by anybody. I'm just... Uh, the Free Range Archivist at a wonderful place called the Internet Archive, archive.org. Some of you know it as the Wayback Machine. And it is, oh uh, yeah. Some people think I made it. No, uh, uh, a man named Brewster Kale co-founded it with money that he got from selling his company. And his dream after becoming fabulously rich was, I could become a librarian now. <laughs> and he did it pretty, pretty well. And so my job within that company is just kind of to see what's neat out there. And that's how I ended up with this kind of a situation. And so uh, I've actually forgotten the question. I was so happy to talk about my company. What? We were, no, it's great. And the Internet Archive is truly amazing. Um, we were going to talk about the implications. So sure. you imagine, you know, I think of at the Atlantic, we have human artists making art. Um, I'm sure they might have strong feelings about the idea of machines making art. What other industries would be potentially affected? Sure. Um, so. Sometimes it's easy to, to kind of anthropomorphize this equipment. I see people do that. They're like, it's very angry, or it's not, it doesn't understand this. And that's- Or it's creepy. Or it's creepy. And it's just very new and what's going on. But the idea of doing deep analysis of wide ranges of culture, observation, uh, uh, pieces of media, this is the flip side to digitizing and putting everything online. Now machines are becoming more and more uh, capable of doing analysis against images, text, music, uh, movies. Uh, we're going to see it go in a, a whole range against medicine, where you can now afford to blast a bunch of um, you know, light readings or deep readings by a machine against a whole bunch of concepts and see what comes out. So for one thing, um, there are experimental search engines out there that you can play with. And you can say things like, I need to see three people around a laptop. And previously, it would have to be three people and a laptop. But it actually is starting to make matches of just where there's three people in the room. Or being able to say, can I see everything where somebody in a car is sad? And it kind of figures it out. And the weirder and more creative you get with this toy, the more fun it gets. Uh, I, see a, I see a future where you'll be able to say, could I read a book from the 1930s 
that's out there. Can I, can I find a book where it's got a happy ending and it takes place in Boston? Or can I have something where they fell in love, but they're not in love at the end? And it'll start so to figure that out, which means, you know, then it's on us to go, well, that's nice, but what are we going to use to that benefit? Are we going to use it to like learn and research and share? Or are we just going to go neat and move on to the next shiny thing? I have more questions, but I think now would be a good time uh, to start showing people what we mean. Do you have... Um... I, I have some examples of things yeah. that I did. I was given access to one of the, uh, the features, uh, one, of the, one of the tests, and I had a lot of fun with it. And I don't have my clicker, <laughs> but I'm, uh, here comes the best part of everything, which is the staff. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so this is uh, detailed blueprints on how to build a beagle. Um, this is... Uh, and just to orient people, so these are prompts that you gave sure. to the model, and this oh, is yeah. what came out of it. Oh, yeah. For the people who don't know how this whole game works, and it's pretty kind of weird, you usually type in some sort of a, a, a line to say, I'm looking for something like this, and then it creates that, and then people will get more and more detailed because they're trying to push it. But think of it less as like programming than uh, saying to somebody, yeah, could you go out there and dance like you're happy, and you just, your kid was just born and you watch what happens. So it's kind of amorphous. This is a lion using a laptop in the style of a, of a um, old tapestry. Um, this is Santa Claus riding a motorcycle in the style of 1970s Kodachrome. Um, this is a Godzilla at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Um, and this he is... He happy. He does look pretty happy for <laughs> yeah. it, doesn't it? This yeah. is a crayon drawing of, of a labor action. Um, <laughs> these are bears doing podcasts. <laughs> um, this is GoPro footage of the D-Day landing. Uh, and of course, a whole bunch of other ones, and just kind of crazy, but different kinds of things I try. For instance, give me an alternative band uh, working at a diner, or give me a father who is a steampunk uh, consoling his steampunk son. And the third one is a FedEx truck at night in a forest eating packages. And, and so, um, and, and I, and I want to just share, this is one I did, where it's just me playing with one of the systems, where I just always have this dream about a boat that flies in the, in the sky over a forest, and it did a pretty good job of it. And this is not synthetic. This is my mother who passed away in 2020. This is Elaine Sadovsky. This is uh, trees around a pond uh, in springtime. And so this was my attempt to get that as well, using the same kind of prompts. So anyway, yeah, so that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm always playing with it. And the reason you're hearing all those strange kind of prompts from me is because I kind of want to understand what are these systems seeing? What are they doing, right? Like, like if you're, you know, right now, it's so easy as a, as a parlor game to say like, yeah, draw, I don't know, a cell phone, but draw it as if it was done as a Roman Greek statue. And that's you kind of slamming against this. But what about doing um, a bittersweet sky or trying to draw uh, uh, like a concerned highway? What, what, is it, what does it see? You know what I mean? What does this suggest to you about the nature of art? I mean, this gets to be sort of an existential question, but is it still human made art in the way that we think of it? And should we be bothered by that? I mean, art, we use all sorts of tools to make so art. So everyone, everyone is super entitled to their own opinion. Do not yes. consider me anything, right? Just, I want to know what you think. I, all I can say is I did, I did drawings as a zine in my teens. I was a street caricaturist. My mother was a painter. My father does painting. My brother's a landscape artist. We come from trying to convince and do great things with the world. And coming from that point of view, I am no more scared of this than I am of the fill tool or of... Uh, like in you, Photoshop. Yeah, or the clone brush, which is another situation where you can play with it. Everything has a potential to be used as a weapon, imagery, words, music, text. We do this as people, but we also see an opportunity here for people who never knew that they had access to art, people who don't have the time, people who are, um, they want to be, a, they, they have a creative expression. And, and I, I, I can almost hear the gears crack and start moving again when I go to somebody who I know and I'm like, could you, could you give me something to draw? A and they do it and they see how it goes and I can't get angry at that particular toy. But I won't pretend that this toy will stay 
in its own way, neutral and, or even as neutral now. And it's interesting you mentioned dreams. I was talking to a colleague about these sorts of tools um, the other week, actually, and, and we were really compelled by the idea of being, to visual, being able to visualize dreams because it's something that otherwise only you see and maybe you can't remember very well anyway. What are the other sorts of things? I mean, fiction comes to mind. Can you think of other things that we can imagine but don't normally get to visualize? Um, a lot of it for people, believe it or not, is like sometimes it's just, um, okay, for me personally, sorry, for me personally, um, I love telling these AIs to draw exquisite lattice work using phrases like exquisite or rare or giving me leather with gold inlay on a toaster or something <laughs> else and watching it kind of move into that world and design things in seconds that aren't perfect but okay, so I'm, are fun. I'm cutting you off only because we're short on time. All right, let's do we're it. Gonna, we're gonna experiment, which is always dangerous. You're never supposed to do stuff in real time. So hopefully this is not gonna be embarrassing, but I have some prompts for you. And I wanna say this is Dali. There's other ones called Mid Journey. Right. Uh, there are many others. Dream they're, they're, Studio, yeah. yeah think of it, just think of it as like early web servers or early web browsers. There's a bunch of companies with various people funding them or doing things their own way. At this point in life, I think most people know, research what you're playing with, look at what's paying for it, feel, decide how you feel about it. In this particular case, I'm using it because it's so easy for us to do right here. Okay, great. So, so that's a nervous top man in a top hat on stage while stagehands dance nearby. <laughs> I also wanted to ask it to design me some alternative, Adrian LaFrancis. Oh, wow. Now, I, I'm just saying while we're bundling- I'm competitive. While we're bundling you into the limo, one of these has to go out and be seen by the crowd, okay? <laughs> Um, let's do, wait, wait, let me do some. Let's do um, people at the Atlantic Festival having a great time in the style of Edward Hopper. So I don't, so just to say before we do it, um, I don't know what it's going to do with Atlantic Festival as a concept, but I'm let's going, find out. and I will say that uh, we're going to do that. But as an artist, you will also sometimes have to translate your work. And I would go, oh, at a big conference. Okay. But let's find out. I press the button, the thing goes off, it's, it's looking at uh, a piles and piles of image uh, pairs, creating, you know, uh, 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 kind of synthesized images around that. And <laughs> it got very hung up on Atlantic and guy? festival. So <laughs> there we go. This, this, this guy right here, he's having the time of his life. All right, give me another one. Okay, how about um, the moment the dinosaurs went extinct, illustrated in Art Nouveau style? Mm. My, my most, my most biggest problem yeah, is typing it. on a cold, cold um, uh, stage with oh, a. Uh, there we go. Right. Oh come on, there we go. Dino. Oh boy. <laughs> this is actually an actual nightmare of mine. No, you're doing <laughs> great. So we'll, we'll do that next. Yeah, we'll do that Jason next. Jason Scott's nightmares. Jason Scott's nightmares. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I, so, so like the excitement of being able to come up with these different. Uh, uh, pieces of work that, that you do, um, and, and, and yeah, and I mean, uh, just to, uh, if I say, well, what, what do you I, Let me do one more, and then we, I'm sorry, I wish we could, we could do this all day, but Chewbacca on the cover of the Atlantic magazine in the style of uh, Renaissance painting. Yeah, I just want to say, like, the most shocking thing for people when they first encounter it is the depth and kind of intricacy that you would normally think would take a long time. That's, I think, part of what draws me in is to go, it's not just gonna go, oh, I did this and applied a filter. <laughs> like, like it's, it's- Very serious. Yeah, no, Chewbacca, <laughs> Chewbacca has some very strong ideals on the world stage. Yes, indeed. Um, and, so, and so when I, when I say to people, you know, like this is one where a friend wanted a, a turtle surfing on a sea of macaroni and cheese, and <laughs> it did a pretty, you know, it did a pretty good job. And and we see like um, uh, uh, the ability to do everything from you know intricate uh, pen and ink drawings to cartoons to to uh, people are using it now already to literally using these things now to make um, all sorts of uh, textures for video games. They are making uh, art along a theme that they need to cover an entire wall of a coffee shop with. They're using it to illustrate their works. Uh, people are trying all sorts of things you know, with this technology and, and are excited by it. But it's also like sampling. It is exactly going to have that level of 
you know, we already have, right. um, there's already services to go, is any of my stuff on any of my services being used for the data set? Right. Is, uh, there, there All are- the biases that can come with this There are some communities, and personally I, I understand this, who are saying we don't want any of that here, right. because they're gonna get flooded. You know, in other words, like if everybody else is producing art at the rate of one or twice a week, and suddenly you get someone who can do 100 in a day, even if they're fun and good, right. you're never gonna know what's what. Well, it raises so many questions. It's great fun. We're in the infancy of all of this, and so I'm sure we'll, we'll revisit it, um, certainly in the pages of The Atlantic. And Jason, thank you so much for being with us, and thank you all.